I'm Kristen, and you're listening to Podcast and Amplify, a podcast for women entrepreneurs who want to amplify their voice and brand through podcasting and grow a wildly successful business. I'm the executive producer and host of two shows and an entrepreneur, and I love helping women grow their visibility, mindset, and business to the next level. Each week, I share tips on how to launch and leverage your podcast, and I'm bringing on the very best business leaders to give you advice on how to build your business empire. Let's amplify your voice and business. back to podcast and amplify i am here today with a very special guest emma louise parks she's a business strategist and mindset coach for ambitious introverts empaths and highly sensitive entrepreneurs and she also hosts the ambitious introvert podcast which i definitely recommend you checking out i listen to it every week Um, She works with entrepreneurs to help them grow and scale successful, sustainable online businesses and build solid foundations that support massive levels of growth and success. She spent 17 years as an air traffic controller and has over 10 years of experience coaching. She's a life coach, trained facilitator, NLP master practitioner, and holds accreditations in EFT, TFT, and the law of attraction. So welcome, Emma Louise. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So I mentioned at the beginning that you were a very special guest. And the reason why you're a special guest is because Emma Louise was actually my coach for the last quarter of 2021. And... You know, I mentioned reading your your bio around sustainable online businesses and building solid foundations. And I feel like that's exactly what we did together. Um, I went into working with Emma Louise, feeling very sort of scattered and needing to feel like focused and really what am I doing? And now I just feel like I have so much ease and confidence because I've built this really solid foundation. And I think with the sustainability part, it's sustainable because I've built a foundation and a way of creating my business that really honors me as an introvert. And that's why I really wanted to work with Emma Louise because she really knows all about introverts and empaths. One of the things that we did towards the end of our working time working together was some energy healing work. And so while Emma Louise is very talented in, in a lot of different areas of growing your business, um, she is also really knowledgeable in this area. So that's why I wanted to have her on to talk about just energy healing work, kind of like going starting with the basics, maybe how you were really introduced to it, what what your journey was to getting to, you know, learning about that and getting into that a little bit more. Um, so if you could talk about that, I'd love to hear about it. I would love to talk about it. It was so funny listening to you read the um, bio, because first of all, I was like, this needs updating because I've got new certifications and things since. But also, it's really good to know that it resonates. And as you were saying that, I'm like, yes, this is exactly what we did. We went to the, you know, back to the basics and made sure that they were like concrete. So yeah, I felt the same way as I was reading it. I'm like, that's literally like how I would describe our experience <laughs> together. No false and like, advertising here. It's like, no, you, definitely you get what not. it says on the tin. <laughs> Yes. And I think that's what, you know, I was craving. And I know that's what a lot of listeners are craving is like creating something, you know, creating your business around like you and what honors you and your energy and how you move through the world. And I think as introverts, we're often told that the way we move through the world isn't like necessarily the right way, or it's not what's going to help you. It's not what success looks like. But you know, obviously success looks different for everyone. And um, so, yeah, I like really tapping into to that is what makes your business sustainable. I know you 
mentioned to me of like, you know, you're not here to like, you know, create something where I'm going to be like, help me create something where I'm going to be burnt out like a year from now. And like, I so appreciated that because it's like, no, we're here for like the long haul. If we're going to be doing this, then let's like, let's do it in a way that feels really good. So yeah, that's something I just really appreciated. So yes, true, true, true statement, true yeah, <laughs> description all true. of <laughs> <laughs> all true. And and it is, and you know, I will come back to your question about the energy healing, but I think it's so important that the most sustainable business is the one where you can turn up every day and be yourself because the amount of effort and energy and misalignment that it creates if you're trying to run a business as someone else or you know, something that we discussed in our time together and that I see with a lot of clients who are more empathic and highly sensitive is seeing other people online and going, oh, I need to do that. I need to do this. Someone else is doing that. Someone else is doing this. And actually the most powerful thing that we can do is understand ourselves and our own USP and our own essence and really stand solid in that and, you know, own that. I market to introverts, empaths, and highly sensitive entrepreneurs, which is probably about 30 to 40% of online business owners, probably less of that actually recognize that they are. So yeah, I could market to everyone, but then it wouldn't make sense to people like yourself who then, you know, come across me and go, that's the person I need because you're there just for me. So I think it's just so important to own your excellence and own your zone of genius and don't be tempted to be pulled out and, and do other things. Just do what you do really well because you probably do it better than anyone else. Yeah, so true. And and it's so easy though to, you know, look at everyone else and think, oh, they've 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 got that magic thing or they've figured it out and I, I can just follow that. But you're so right in terms of like connecting back to yourself and what is going to help you want to show up to your business every day. Cause that's kind of like what it's all about. Right. It's like, I have that conversation with myself a lot um, where I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I could just go work for anyone, <laughs> you know, but I'm doing this because, you know, I want to feel like I want to show up every day. You know, it's like part of the big why, right? So it's like, okay, it's such an important part. And I think a lot of it too, is like being in integrity um, like with yourself, not just with how you run your business, but with you. And that's something, something that I felt like it was like an added bonus. You were very much an in integrity in your business. And I got to see that modeled. I got to see kind of like behind the scenes, like, oh, what does that really look like? What does that really feel like? And I found myself like thinking, oh, yes, that's what I want. That's, you know, just seeing it. Um, but, but for me, I'm like, I got to see something before I... I don't know if believe is the word, but I just like to like, I like to have like that experience um, before I, for myself really like believe like it is possible. Um, so that's definitely another was another added like bonus of, of working with you. It's like, Oh, okay. That's what that looks like. I can do that. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes we need to give ourselves permission, right. In a weird way. Exactly. And sometimes we do have to see to believe, you know, and I, I think we're very similar in that way. I love to research and I love to learn, but quite often until I've actually experienced it or, you know, seen someone close to me do something that I really go, oh, now this clicks. Like now I trust it. I've got a little bit of evidence there. And I, I'm not the most, like I'm not a big sharer on social media. I, I'm not someone doing reels and I don't like share a ton of personal stuff, but with my clients, I'm a, I'm a really open book, which I'm sure you'll attest to. Like I share my challenges and I'll share what's gone well and what hasn't and all of that. And I, you know, and I try to do that for that very reason, because if you can see that someone else has struggled or someone else has, you know, had a dip or something's gone wrong for them, but they've stayed in integrity and they've still continued their business in a way that honors themselves, then of course, as you say, it gives you the kind of the proof and the permission to keep doing that yourself. Yes, definitely. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about how you first became like aware of like healing work and what got you excited about it. So I'd always been like, I'm very interested in a lot of things. I've always read quite widely. I've always been interested in the more woo aspects of things. Um, definitely the brain body connection, um, you know, illness being rooted in, you know, um, things 
from our minds and our emotions and all of that. I've always found that really, really interesting. You know, I had adrenal fatigue in my 30s when I was working shifts and I also had some autoimmune issues and I could pinpoint a lot of it back to stress and really, you know, dis-ease, causing disease. So I've always been very interested in that, that kind of connection. And when I left my corporate job and went full-time in my coaching business, I worked with an energy coach to help me transition out. So we didn't do energy healing or clearing as such, but she talked a lot about the chakras. She talked a lot about how different foods impact our energy, my human design, all of these kind of different aspects. And it really piqued my interest. Not long after that, I did my EFT certification, which is emotional freedom technique. People know it quite commonly as tapping. So it's, it's quite popular in you know, personal development where you tap certain points along the meridian of the body while you're speaking and it clears the energy of the system. And I took this certification because I thought it was interesting. That was as far as it went. I didn't think it would be part of my business. And I did a few sessions with clients and said to them, oh, would you like to tap? At the end, once I you know, completed the certification, they were like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they had huge results, like profound shifts. And I had people crying while they were doing it. I had them yawning like a huge release or, you know, messaging me two hours later saying, I just went and slept for two hours after that. And I was like, we just did five minutes of like tapping our faces and, and saying words. So that's when I really realized that there was something very profound in energy and a little bit like you said, I think I had to see it with those clients before, even though I'd done, you know, I knew the science, I'd done the certification, I, I'd been accredited. And when I saw other people having those results, I was like, okay, this, this is powerful. Yeah, I, yes, it's the seeing to believe, <laughs> seeing to, or, before you believe again. Um, and I am remembering back to when we worked together and you know you did that energy healing with me it was so powerful and and that's definitely why I wanted to talk about it because I didn't have really any awareness around you know I'm I'm what do I want to say I'm woo but I'm not like crazy woo but I'm open to things um so I think that's where I was and I think you were like are you open to this (laughs) it's like Sure. Um, But I thought, you know, you did a really great job of like breaking down what it was for me. And so that I can understand like, okay, what is this process that we're going to be doing? So if you could give us that breakdown, maybe how you went from the tapping to the energy clearing. Yeah, absolutely. So with the tapping, obviously saw, you know, huge results in that. And became more interested in energy, read, read more about it. And then probably about, no, oh, about 18 months after that certification, I had the opportunity to train as an online business consultant with Gemma Went. So this certification was, you know, just released to her email list. There was no big launch and it was a six month accreditation where you'd learn all aspects of online business from Gemma, who had eight years of experience, um, someone who's very much in integrity in her business as well. And that I had a lot of respect for. So when it was a weird thing, I wasn't looking to do a certification, but I thought, oh, this is great. I can learn more. Yeah, always learning. I can learn more to help my clients with. And as I was reading the sales page, she was talking about, you know, we'll do marketing, we'll do building a team, we'll do outsource, we'll do all of this. Great. And then it's like, and you'll also be trained in the expansion energy codes. And it just, seemed very disjointed from everything else. But I was like, oh, this sounds really interesting. And they were developed by a lady called Michelle Lowbridge, who I'd been following for years and really loved her work. And Gemma had worked with her to design these energy clearing codes because she'd been through her own kind of experience at Lycos, you know, experienced it herself, believed it, and wanted to bring it to, um, to the world. So yeah, as part of this business consultant certification, I also got certified in using the energy codes and that was, I think I actually graduated in that while we were working together or maybe mm-hmm. maybe just before. I think so. So I'd only just started, you know, being able to use the codes on clients. And you were probably one of the first 
one of the first ones. So the codes themselves are, your know, code sounds a bit like mathematical, but really it's moving the energy out of your system. So the premise is that energy gets stuck in, we've got nine energy bodies in the body, various systems, and energy can get stuck, especially if it's from a negative thought or a negative emotion. Because if we look at a quantum physics aspect, everything is a vibration. Everything vibrates at a certain frequency, whether it's you know high vibe, as we say, or low vibe. So if you have a thought that is, say, shameful, that's a really low vibe thought. And it resonates. It resonates throughout the body, a body that is thinking about shame. You know, it, it, science has shown it, it reacts really differently to a body that's thinking about joy and happiness. So the codes themselves work by um, utilizing four very simple things. First of all, we utilize the palms of the hands because they are the most magnetic part of the body. We utilize the meridians, so like Chinese traditional medicine. We utilize the chakra system from the ancient Indian system and just modern popular psychology. And it enables us to place our hands in a certain position along the center line of the body, along the chakras. And this sounds horrible, but to sit in our discomfort, to think those thoughts which cause that negative vibration or may have a resonance there and to sit with them only for a few minutes. But when we can turn that feeling of discomfort up in, in I'm going to say a safe space where someone's there for you, you know, you're, you're held there, they're taking you through the process. It allows it to release through the hands and through the body. And then with various embodiment practices and self-care afterwards to ensure that it's fully cleared. The results are just phenomenal as I know you can attest. Yeah, it was definitely a very moving experience. I'm trying to like articulate how profound it was, which is a little little challenging, but definitely a huge just shift. And I'm curious for the codes, how does one develop those? Can you create your own codes? Does someone create codes? Like that part, I'm a little like, hmm, not sh- not clear on that part. So Michelle is someone that's been doing this kind of work for years. She's been doing this energy editing, as that's her trademark for it. So she uses the term energy editing. She is very down to earth, very lovely, but she is also very woo. And she intuits a lot of it. So she intuitively knows where the resonance is, where it gets trapped in the body. And she develops them based on her intuition, which is incredible because they work. Right. Yeah. Okay. That totally clears it up. I was like, okay, someone's making these codes. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a mathematician somewhere. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that totally makes um, sense. Hey friends, we'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I wanted to take just a few seconds to invite you to a free workshop that I created. It's called Launch a Binge Worthy Podcast, and it's all about helping you to create a heartfelt podcast that reaches your soul listeners and grows your business. If you want access, just go to podcastandamplify.com. It's totally free. Okay, friend, back to the show. And so I think for us, you know, you had me place my hands, I think it was on my throat. And then you asked me like three questions and it was very moving and and very, very powerful. And it was sitting in the discomfort, but like you said, like very much held, very much like someone's guiding you through this process. And I felt so safe Um, and safety is a big thing for me. that part of having someone guide you and be there with you, it makes it so much easier to confront things that are uncomfortable. And in fact, I would say it's kind of an ideal way to do it, to explain it to maybe people who are not woo. You know, if you don't believe in the energy, that's fine for someone, I guess, who's who's more skeptical. I think what the questions did was really have me ask myself, like tap into my inner knowing. Right. And if at the end of the day, like that's what you take from it, like that's great. 
there's all, you know, all those other, other things around it that I, I think that are really great. And I totally am like, yes, it's all working together. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's really someone helping you to ask yourself the questions. And then it's like, in my mind's eye, I saw so clearly like what the answer was that I think I told message you later, like, oh, I, I was afraid that I would forget what this feeling is, but it's actually so like unshakable now. I love that. I love that. You know, like I, I don't think I can forget it. Yeah. And I, I think what's happened because you had that feeling of joy and that's what we worked on is especially when we've been in corporate or we've been building a business and we feel like it's hard because it is, right? It's growth. It's a challenge. It's a struggle. And sometimes we can go for quite a few years where things are hard and that becomes the default mode. We expect things to be hard. It's just, you know, the MO. And that joy gets lost. And then when we do something as simple as this energy clearing, what happened was, as you said, that you felt that joy and you were, you had this fear that like, what if I can't get that back without, you know, you being yes. here and doing this all the time. But, <laughs> but actually re- what brought it back was releasing the energy that was opposing it. So as soon as that energy was released and you had it, you almost, it's like installing a different operating system. That's the only way I can explain it. And as you said, like we spoke a week later and you're like, I can just tap into that. It, it's just there now. Yeah. Oh, it's so lovely. <laughs> so it's so great to have. And so, um, you know, I, I, I definitely had this really great experience with it. And so how has it like enhanced your coaching? How has it enhanced, um, your, your business and, you know, impacted your clients? I mean, they were all really excited because they'd been watching my journey on the certification. And, you know, I've been sharing a little bit about how the codes had affected me because as part of my training, I, you know, I had them all done on me. So someone, you know, held that space for me to go through them. So not only did I learn how to do it, but I'd been through and experienced it. And I had some really, really huge moments in my business during that, um, especially after I don't remember which code it was. Oh, self-worth, self-worth code. So after that, I, I had my biggest sales month in business by a mile. And it, there's no way it wasn't related to that shift mm-hmm. in energy because I wasn't doing anything any different strategy-wise. So like, I, I had these great results. So once I was certified, clients were like, oh yeah, you know, most of them were open. Some, some people, you know, I've got some clients that are, faith-based and religious and, and they they don't they're not interested which is fine but the majority were like yes yes let me try this and the feedback has been just like you on my questionnaire before every <laughs> session almost every client's like can I have another code please <laughs> like people are yeah. literally re- requesting them every every week and I have one client who she's had all eight codes now we've been through all eight and she says that mindset issues that she's had for about five years in business she's like I just don't even have that thought anymore just it just doesn't even come up she almost can't imagine she can't remember the things that she used to think about you know being judged or when she was posting online she's just like this just doesn't even come into my head like she said that those codes that for her it's been life-changing yeah, I believe it. I just got one. I got a little taste. <laughs> and so I imagine all eight are just like <laughs> a lot of power behind that. Yeah, I think. And the thing is, they've been designed, you know, Gemma have been in online business for eight years and she's gone to work with Michelle Lowbridge, who has you know, all of this energy experience. They were designed with entrepreneurs in mind. Like Gemma's very aware of the mindset issues that we struggle with. So the codes were designed around things like that, around self-worth, self-trust, abundance, being seen as an expert, being judged. So they they resonate, I think, just so much with so many of the fears that we have as entrepreneurs, whether we realize it or not. So I think having all eight has really, again, a solid foundation. Yeah, and I think you're so right. I mean, being an entrepreneur challenges us in so many ways, 
And it's great. It's such an opportunity to, you know, for personal growth and to stretch ourselves. Um, but there are definitely specific things that I think, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're like you mentioned, the self-doubt and the like maybe visibility and um and even the the joy, like what we you know, worked on because like you said, if you when you go from a, a corporate to entrepreneur and it's such a different energy, you know, the corporate, you know, a lot of times you're sort of withholding joy or you're withholding gratification until you meet milestones or, you know, and, and entrepreneurship can look so different, at least for myself. It's like, well, how can I feel the joy in everything that I do or more consistently? So, I mean, it's great that to have these codes that are really kind of geared towards the entrepreneur and like the things that they're struggling with one part of the joy code in particular and one of the questions is when do i deserve joy so you sit in the energy of you know re really mulling over that silently while you've got your hands in position for the release but when do i deserve joy such an interesting one because you put all of these conditions and limitations like you say like you know oh when i've hit the next mark or you know oh i'll be happy when i've signed a client or i'll be happy when i've made this much revenue and without even realizing it even by thinking like oh i deserve joy when this happens we're shutting ourselves off to experience in it in the meantime of course the irony being if we're in a joyful disposition and we are literally vibrating at a joyful level we will magnetize the right opportunities to us yeah, absolutely. It's like when I hit six figures, when I sell this many programs, when I, you know, have this kind of client. Yeah, there's so many things, barriers that we can put in front of ourselves that are blocking what we want. Yeah, and stop us from being in that beautiful energy of, you know, all of the time. And that's not to say that you're going to be, you know, joyful floating around like right. <laughs> all day, every every day, but we certainly don't need to attach conditions to it. And and it's funny you say that because I used to have a revenue in mind that I thought that was like the epitome of success. And I would be happy when I got there. The irony was I was so focused on it before I'd even like made anything in my business, which was crazy because I should have been focused on the first client. But I was so focused on this revenue goal that I thought was this measure of success. And you know, when I when I hit it in my business, I didn't even realize for three months because by that point I it wasn't about that anymore I'd tapped much more into what do I want to be doing daily and then you know I went through my books and I was like oh okay but you know nothing changed and it shouldn't right because we, we should oh. be able to be there and be in it every day not wait for some external metric to kind of validate us right oh that's such a great story and example of yeah of being like so focused on it and then like it happened and literally nothing had changed <laughs> it was very <laughs> casually like oh okay yeah yeah okay so after we did the energy healing there was a little bit of self-care that you assigned to me so that is sort of like that last step in the process um can you talk a little bit about that yeah so when we do any kind of energy work, there are actually nine separate energy fields in the body. I've got a great book that I can I can send you the link to if you want to pop it in the show yes, notes for anyone please. who's really interested in that. Um, all about the different you know energy systems. It's it's just amazing. They're all interact. They're all separate, but they all interact. So, um, like we talked about, the meridians and the chakras are the two of them. But there, you know, we've got our aura or biofield and you know, six more is amazing, but basically they can get a little bit out of kilter, especially if you're disturbing energy that's been stuck for a long time. You know, sometimes people are during the codes, images and thoughts come up from childhood that they've been carrying around for 20, 30 years. So it can upset the balance of the energy systems a little bit. So because of that, there's quite a strict self-care protocol, um, although they're all very nice things to do. Um, one of them is drinking at least two liters of water a day because we want to make sure that any any you know stagnant energy is getting flushed out. The second is Epsom salt foot baths, which again the soles of the feet, like the palms of the hands, are so magnetic and have such a connection. And the salt helps to draw out 
any of that energy that's still stuck in the system. So a couple of salt baths for the feet each week. And the last one, which is my personal favorite, is lying still, lying flat and still for 10 minutes a day. And you might think, well, I do that in bed. But actually, physically lying flat on the floor with no stimulus, you know, not listening to anything, not reading anything for 10 minutes. Even if you're not doing energy work, if you do identify as highly sensitive, so good for your nervous system. Some of my clients have made that daily practice, even when they're not having the codes, because they've really noticed it, it make a difference. So again, it just allows the nine energy systems in the body to recalibrate. It allows it to integrate and everything to settle down because we don't realize how much we move during the day, how much stimulus we subject to. So carving out just that 10 minutes to lie down and just let it all settle is, yeah, beautiful. So my favorite part was definitely the foot baths. I enjoyed that so much. Um, And laying down for, you know, 10 minutes, I was a little challenging at first, but I think the more that I did it, the more... I appreciated it, Mm. you know, just to have that time to just be quiet and not, you know, just lay there and just give my, it felt very um, like I was giving myself a gift for 10 minutes. I love this with all of the, you know, every part of the self-care protocol, actually, like I said at the start, like they're not horrible things to have to do, like, you know, make yourself a, a gorgeous foot bath or make sure you hydrate like you know this is good for us whatever drinking two liters of water like all of these practices are great alone but it just really helps the energy to to clear out and yeah that resistance is very common I think it's a little bit like when people start meditating at first to sit in the silence and and sit there it feels very much like I should be doing this or I could be doing this and one of my clients in particular found the line flat for 10 minutes very challenging and the first few codes she did she felt quite funky after them and I said you you really have to do the self-care you have to prioritize and then the third code she prioritized it had like an almost instant result and now she lies on the floor every day she loves lying on the floor she it's the favorite 10 minutes of the day she gets up out of bed and gets straight on the floor and lies down and she her husband's like you've just got out of bed what what are you lying down for but you know she's got kids she's busy and she's like if I don't do it now I wouldn't do it but a little bit like you said she feels like it's a treat like it's self-care it's luxurious and you know it feels luxurious luxurious (laughs) all of this you know that goes on to raise our self-worth because we're telling our nervous system and we're telling our subconscious like I am worth taking 10 minutes out for and and lying down like I'm totally worth this so I just think all of these things have such a ripple effect on each other yes and you know like the example you gave of your client who gets out of bed to lay on the ground (laughs) I mean that's like talk about prioritizing yourself first right right? that's the first thing thing. you do in your day Yeah. yeah yeah that's beautiful um, okay, so you mentioned a book because I do want did want to ask you, you know, if people want to learn more about energy and maybe energy healing, like uh, where can they go? But I know you're a huge reader, and so it sounds like you have a, a book recommendation for me. I do. It's called Energy Medicine, and it's by Donna Eden. It's a big book. It's a big book. If you can get a Kindle or iBooks version, I would I would recommend it because it's it's quite hefty. But so you're not like lugging it around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it, it's it's quite a beast. But I think it was written in the 80s, if not the 80s, then the 90s. So um Donna Eden has been an energy practitioner for many years and she just does a beautiful job of describing the nine different energy fields how they can affect us. She gives anecdotal evidence of her work with clients on how she's been able to remove blockages on how she actually sees how uh, energy interacts with other fields. Like it's just, it's so interesting, but so accessible. And Donna also has a great YouTube channel. So I would highly recommend that. She's got so many free videos on there that 
even if you just wanted to do, you know, a five minute energy routine in the morning to, you know, start protecting your energy or maybe move some, you know, move any stagnant energy around. Um, that's just a really great way of maybe having like a little taste into this kind of work and understanding a bit more about your own energy. Oh, perfect. Love that. We'll definitely um, link those two resources, the book and the YouTube channel um, in the show notes. So I want to make sure before we end our conversation that people know how they can find out more about you, how they can work with you. So if you can share that with us. Absolutely. So as anyone listening is obviously a podcast listener, I would love to invite you to come and listen to the Ambitious Introvert podcast. We release weekly and that's probably the best resource that I have for any introverts, highly sensitive and empathic entrepreneurs looking to start, grow or scale their online business. Otherwise, you can join the Ambitious Introvert Network, which is my free Facebook group. Um, It's a very lovely, supportive, safe space as you will test yourself because you're in there so it's a really great place um where I share all my content but people are also free to come and promote their content ask questions and just network and get to know other introverts in a way that doesn't feel kind of over overwhelming or overbearing and I would love to connect with you on Instagram my handle is at ambitious introvert perfect so The spaces that Emma Louise creates are just so lovely. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge about energy healing and and painting the picture for us of like what that looks like. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. If you love today's episode, please subscribe so you don't miss a show. And rating and reviewing this podcast is the best way to help support us. Always remember your voice and what you have to offer is needed in the world. Until next week, take care.